looked at before and this is where the chain length doesn't change but the position changes so the example that I've given you is the one that I gave uh, right at the beginning so where we have our important functional groups changing their location we have a different uh, we have two different isomers and these would be called position isomers so the ones that we drew uh, to explain uh, isomerism in the first place which was the 1,1-dichloroethane and the 1,2-dichloroethane these would be called position isomers is there another one we can look at that helps to show us po uh, position isomers well of course there is and one of the ones that we're going to um, do that with is just I'm going to make a slight modification to uh, one of the compounds that I was looking at before. So in this case, I'm going to use butene. So here is a molecule of butene. Not quite. Here is a molecule of butene. So you can see there are one, two, three, four carbons on this one. And there are two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogens. So if I was to look at um, butene, one of the things about butene is the double bond could be in more than one position. And that's what I'm after in order to look at position isomerism. So I need to make sure that my number indicates the position of the double bond. So this would be but one in. Okay, it's off an end carbon. And so while I could go one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, if I start from here, it's number one, that's already the smallest number. So that's the easiest way for me to name that. Again, this time, what I want to do is keep the chain length the same, but I want to change the position of my functional group. So the simplest way for me to do that is to again, take a methyl group off, but rather than putting it in the middle, this time I'm going to put it at the end. What that's going to do is it's going to move my functional group now to between the two middle carbons. So again, I haven't added or subtracted any atoms. I still have four carbons and eight hydrogens. But now the position of the double bond has gone from between the first two carbons to the two middle carbons. So this one would be but 2 -ene. When I represent these, double bond and then two single bonds and then one two three one two there's already three there so just one and two on the end for butene start again with the carbon chain and then three there one one and three there and then fill in your hydrogens so once again you can see we, we have to um, check our rules about isomerism, which is molecular formula C4H8 for the first one, which is but one -ene. And for the second one, which is but 2 -ene, I have exactly the same molecular formula, which is C4H8. So they fulfill uh, the criteria of isomers. They have exactly the same molecular formula but they have different structural formulas. Now you may think there's not a lot of difference between um, a double bond that occurs on an end carbon and a double bond that occurs between two central carbons, but these are very important differences. They do change some of the chemical properties of our molecules and may, depending on the types of uh, isomers that we create, also change some of the physical properties too.